Carbuncles are a type of skin infection that can be both painful and concerning for those who experience them. This infection occurs when multiple hair follicles and their surrounding tissue become infected by bacteria. The result is a swollen, red, and often painful lump that can range in size from as small as a pea to as large as a golf ball. Imagine several small, puss-filled bumps joining forces to create one larger, more problematic infection. Carbuncles aren't just surface-level problems. They form deep within the skin and can affect the underlying tissue as well. This deeper infection is what sets carbuncles apart from their smaller cousins, boils. While a boil is usually a single, isolated infection, a carbuncle is like a group of boils, so multiple infections are coming together to form one larger, more serious problem. So, they typically appear as a connected area of infection under the skin, and they are usually red, swollen, and filled with pus. As the infection progresses, the carbuncle may develop a white or yellow tip, which can eventually rupture and drain. Carbuncles most commonly occur in areas where there's a combination of hair, sweat, and friction. The most frequent locations include the back of the neck, the thighs, the buttocks, and sometimes the face or armpits. Men tend to develop carbuncles more often than women, particularly on the back of the neck. Causes of carbuncles The primary culprit behind carbuncles is usually a bacterium called Staphylococcus aureus, often referred to as staph. This bacteria is actually quite common. Many people carry it on their skin or in their noses without any problems. However, when it finds its way into a break in the skin, like a small cut or an irritated hair follicle, it can cause an infection. Several factors can increase your risk of developing carbuncles. Poor hygiene is a significant contributor. When skin isn't cleaned regularly, bacteria have more opportunity to enter hair follicles and cause infections. Friction and sweating can also play a role, which is why carbuncles often appear in areas where skin rubs against skin or clothing, like the back of the neck, thighs, or buttocks. A weakened immune system is another major risk factor. When your body's defense mechanisms are compromised, it's harder to fight off bacterial invaders. This is why people with conditions like HIV or AIDS, cancer, or those undergoing chemotherapy are more susceptible to carbuncles. Similarly, chronic diseases that affect the immune system, such as diabetes, can increase the risk. Other risk factors include living in close quarters with others, which can facilitate the spread of bacteria, having oily skin, which can clog pores more easily, and wearing tight clothing that causes excessive sweating and friction. Age also plays a role, with carbuncles being more common in middle-aged and older adults. Symptoms of carbuncles a carbuncle usually begins as a small, red, tender bump on the skin. Over the course of a few days, this bump grows larger and more painful. The surrounding skin becomes inflamed and hardened. As pus accumulates under the skin, the carbuncle may feel warm to the touch and become increasingly sensitive. Many people describe the sensation of a carbuncle as a constant, throbbing pain. The area can be so tender that even light touch or the friction from clothing can cause significant discomfort. As the carbuncle grows, it can make movement difficult, especially if it's located in an area like the thigh or buttocks. In some cases, people may experience systemic symptoms as well. These can include fever, chills, and a general feeling of being unwell. These symptoms are a sign that the body is fighting the infection and are more common with larger carbuncles or in people with weakened immune systems. As the carbuncle matures, it may develop a white or yellow head. This is where the pus is closest to the surface of the skin. Eventually, this head may open, allowing the pus to drain. While this can provide some relief from the pressure and pain, it's important to note that the drainage is highly infectious and can spread the bacteria to other areas of skin if not properly managed. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of carbuncles. Diagnosing a carbuncle is typically straightforward for doctors. The characteristic appearance of a cluster of boils, along with the patient's description of symptoms, is usually sufficient for a diagnosis. However, in some cases, additional tests may be necessary. A doctor might take a sample of the pus to identify the specific bacteria causing the infection.
This can be particularly important if the carbuncle doesn't respond to initial treatment or if the patient has recurrent infections. In these cases, the bacteria might be resistant to certain antibiotics, and identifying it can help guide treatment. For patients with frequent carbuncles or those with underlying health conditions, a doctor might recommend blood tests. These can help identify any underlying issues that might be making the person more susceptible to infections, such as diabetes or problems with the immune system. Treatment for carbuncles. The treatment approach can vary depending on the severity of the infection and the overall health of the patient. For small carbuncles, home treatment might be sufficient. This typically involves applying warm, moist compresses to the affected area several times a day. The heat helps increase blood circulation to the area, which can speed up healing and help bring the carbuncle to a head. It's crucial to use a clean compress each time to avoid introducing more bacteria to the area. Once the carbuncle opens and begins to drain, it's important to keep the area clean. Gently washing with antibacterial soap and water, then covering with a clean, dry dressing can help prevent the spread of infection. It's essential to wash hands thoroughly before and after caring for the carbuncle to avoid spreading the bacteria. For larger or more severe carbuncles, medical intervention may be necessary. Your doctor might need to make a small incision to help the carbuncle drain. This procedure, known as incision and drainage, is typically done under local anesthesia. The doctor will create a small cut in the carbuncle and gently squeeze out the pus. They may then pack the wound with sterile gauze to allow it to continue draining and heal from the inside out. Antibiotics are often prescribed for large or severe carbuncles, especially if you have a fever or other signs of a more widespread infection. The choice of antibiotic depends on the specific bacteria causing the infection, which is why that pus culture can be so helpful. In some cases, oral antibiotics are sufficient, while more severe infections might require intravenous antibiotics. For people with recurrent carbuncles, additional measures might be necessary. This could include using antiseptic washes or ointments to reduce the amount of bacteria on the skin. In some cases, a doctor might recommend a course of antibiotics to eliminate staph bacteria that may be living in the nose, which is a common reservoir for these bacteria. With proper care, most carbuncles will heal within a few weeks. However, it's crucial not to ignore them or try to pop or drain them yourself, as this can lead to more serious infections or scarring. Prevention of carbuncles. To prevent carbuncles, good hygiene practices are crucial. This includes regular bathing or showering, especially after sweating or engaging in activities that cause friction on the skin. Using antibacterial soap can also help reduce the amount of bacteria on the skin. Wearing loose-fitting, breathable clothing can help reduce sweating and friction, particularly in areas prone to carbuncles. It's also important to avoid sharing personal items like razors or towels, which can spread bacteria from person to person. For those with oily skin, using non-comedogenic skincare products can help prevent clogged pores, which can be entry points for bacteria. Now we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have a carbuncle? What was the cause of it? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.